Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Dave, and with me is my lovely wife, Amy. And hey. here, hi. <laughs> hi. And we are here at Shores Wellness Solutions, the Natural Health and Wellness Center, to bring you some more education. And this week's topic: Fix your gut, save your life. Does anyone have any gut issues uh, going on ever? So we're going to be teaching about ways for them to prevent disease and sickness. Yep. Awesome. We are. All right. Ready to start? Yeah, go. Good. All so right. welcome. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining us today. And take a moment right now and share this with somebody so that they too can watch with us or watch later. Mm -hmm. All right. So the gastrointestinal system, it's an incredible uh, gateway or pathway to optimum health. It really is. And if you don't mind, I'll do a little anatomy lesson. Okay, go. All right? And I won't make <laughs> you stand up, I promise. So you think about this. We eat things, drink things, we put things into our mouth. We swallow, it goes down into our stomach where it should have a, a proper acid wash. And then from there, and we should chew well, not just like bite and swallow. So chew things well, get a proper acid wash. From there it goes into the small intestine where then it gets um, bombarded with digestive enzymes from the pancreas and bile from the gallbladder, which is made by the liver. So it's important to have a gallbladder. Don't let anybody talk you into taking it out. And if they're trying to, contact us. Five days, we'll have it back to normal. Mark my word, right? That's a, almost like a guarantee. Anyway, so from the small intestine, it goes through there, the three parts of that, till it gets to the large intestine. And 95% of our digestion is done in the small intestine. And that's what we're gonna be focusing our talk on today. But then from there, it goes into the large intestine, uh, the waste product, and then we know what happens with that afterwards. So I won't get graphic on that, but I know some people go, ooh, talk about it every day. You're right. Well, <laughs> that's what we do. So that's the digestive system in a nutshell. Yeah. Well, the gut microbiome is an ecosystem mm. of organisms, including bacteria, yeast, fungus, viruses um, that go throughout the digestive tract. All right. So far beyond just digestive health, the following organ systems are also closely related to your gut health. So if your gut's not the way it should be, mm -hmm. if it's not healthy, you could have immune system issues, mm -hmm. endocrine issues, nervous system issues, circulatory system issues, respiratory, reproductive issues. There's a lot of things that is correlated to gut health. So some of the major functions of the gut include digestion, immune mm -hmm. response, so it helps you have a better immune system. Nutrient absorption. Yep. Hormonal Horm yeah. balance. Right. Yep. And vitamin production, detoxification. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that play a role in how the gut works or if it's not working properly, mm -hmm. you could have a lot of other health issues besides just having an upset stomach. Now you talked about the just moments ago, the gut biome, the, the microbes in there. We have about 40,000 different types of, of organisms that live in our gut that make up about six to eight pounds of our body weight at any one time. And as mentioned, they do so many things. They will manufacture vitamins from the foods that we eat. They will make different neurotransmitters. In our body, about 75% of our neurotransmitters come from the gut. About 80% of our immune function comes from the gut. So, you know, you heard the old commercial, you know, you are what you eat. And it's so true. Right. Right. So, um, this yeah. workshop's going to be for anyone who suffers from digestive distress, mm -hmm. heartburn, respiratory issues, rashes, water retention, constipation, mm -hmm. Acne, mm -hmm. migraines, congestion, fatigue, irritability, depression, or brain fog. So do any of you suffer from any of that? If so, you might want to watch this because we're going to talk a little bit about how you can combat some of those issues. That's right. Hang in with us for the next hour and 45 minutes. So pretty much all of these things can be um, related mm -hmm. to the gut. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Okay. So functional medicine serves as uh, both conventional medicine and contemporary healthcare, and it uses a model of personalized care and treatment for the root cause of the issues, and that is we're looking for sustainable health promotion. And so when we talk about functional medicine, and I know some of my chiropractic colleagues you know, cringe when I use that term, and that's okay. Or functional wellness. Functional wellness, right? right. And so what are we doing? We're looking at what is the underlying cause. And if you're just looking at symptoms, so for instance, if somebody comes into us with a headache and you know we treat them for the headache like an allopathic provider, they might give them a painkiller or a muscle relaxer or a combination, 
But if they get that and the headache goes away, that's good because, you know, they want, the person wants to get rid of their headache. But the question that we always have is, what caused that headache? What caused that headache? Right. And so if you're not getting to the underlying cause, guess what's most likely going to come back? Your headache. The headache. And so there are patients that we see that at times, you know, we work with them and supplement-wise, and really within a few short weeks, their symptoms are gone and we're able to get them on some maintenance things. And, but there's other patients that are very complicated and complex with their conditions because they've been there long term and there's a lot of underlying conditions. And it might be months and sometimes even a couple of years till we finally get to um, the balancing of keeping their symptoms at bay. Well, mm -hmm. we're going to be discussing some of the things that are sabotaging your gut health and strategies mm -hmm. that you can regain control of your health with some functional medicine or mm -hmm. functional wellness practices. Mm -hmm. Which we don't like to really call it medicine because we don't no. we don't use any kind of medications at all. So I say it's more functional wellness over medication. I agree because if you look at medications, right? A medication you take and it disrupts the nervous system. Mm -hmm. It'll suppress something so you don't feel symptoms, right. or it'll stimulate something to um, promote uh, function in the body. When we look at it nutritionally and holistically, we're not looking to drive the nervous system above or below where it should be, we're looking to get it back to balance and correction. And so it, it could be a, could be a slower process and sometimes a quicker process, but definitely a more complete process. Well, the gut is powerful, but very delicate. Mm -hmm. There are many different factors that inhibit the gut's ability to maintain its bacterial balance, structural integrity, and the ability to absorb vitamins and nutrients. A few of the most common enemies to gut health include uh, Your this, favorite. <laughs> sad. Standard American diet. And that's, I don't do it. Yeah. Bread, pasta, cereal, biscuits, muffins, pancakes, waffles, donuts, bagels, cookies, cakes, candy, pizza, roti, naan, empanadas, all those things. Right. A diet rich in sugar and chemicals and lacking in nutrients and fibers are what contributes to an unhealthy ecosystem within the gut. So, Go ahead. Do you know back in 1912, Robert Wiley, who was the um, head of the FDA, used to commandeer train cars loaded with white flour and destroy them to protect the American people from such devastating um, substance leaking into the food system. And it used to be illegal to take it from state to state. I did not know that. Right. And in 1912, they ousted them in order to make things with white flour. Well, another thing that disrupts your gut is excessive medications. Mm -hmm. The overprescription of antibiotics, mm -hmm. steroids, anti-inflammatories, and acid blocking drugs significantly disturb the gut's microbial balance. Go. Thanks. Medications. <laughs> the average American, 65 and older, takes 50 prescriptions per year. Now we're not talking about the short-term ones. We're talking about every day. And when they get to 80, it's 18. That's the average. That's ludicrous. And you know, when we talk about the gut and acid reflux, because you just mentioned it right there, acid reflux is actually an issue of not producing enough acid. The changes the microbes that live in our stomach, and that's what creates the reflux. When we reacidify the stomach, get more acid in there, it wipes out the organisms that don't belong, and lo and behold, reflux is gone. Right. And that's usually a two to four week process, bam, done. Yeah. So you actually need more acid, that's not right. less. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have an inadequate digestive enzyme activity. So if you don't have enough digestive mm -hmm. enzymes to help break down, what happens? You can't digest your foods. Exactly. And this is important, why we start look at uh, digestion as a north to south process, right? The northern end is the acid. If you don't acid wash the food, not before you eat it, but when it goes through your stomach, then what will happen is a lot of times the foods you eat, the hormones of the foods aren't broken down, and that can create havoc in your body. And I don't know if many people know this, but your enzymes for digestion, your protease, lipase, and amylase to digest uh, proteins, carbs, and fats come from pancreas. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of another thing that can cause um, an unhealthy gut is toxic exposure. Toxins are found in our air, water, foods, personal care mm -hmm. products, and they all damage the gut's ability to function properly. Infections, mm -hmm. having an infection can also um, cause pathogens such as bacteria, yeast, viruses, and fungi, parasites. All of that can cause a disruption in the gut. That's correct.
chronic stress also because I'm sure nobody is stressed out right now. Not now, no. No, so I'm sure we're all feeling really great and not having any gut issues currently at the moment. Get some sunshine. Yes. So, Get some sunshine. Exactly. So it's reported that 63% <laughs> of the calories Americans are consuming come from processed foods containing preservatives, refined grains, and added sugars, and really bad oils. Hmm. That's a lot. You know, it used to be before the 1960s that the average American pretty much had a, a good diet. I won't say great, but a good diet. You had proper protein and fats and the right carbs. And the carbs, most of them came from vegetables, or as Rue would say, Vegetables. Vegetables. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> so, our grandchild. That's our granddaughter, yeah. So anyway, when the shift came to frighten us away as a society from fats and shift us to carbs, the average American started eating 400 more calories of food consumption a day, which equates to about an extra 26 pounds that you hold on your body. Right. right. So the average American is about 26 pounds. And that, that's those facts are about six years old. It's actually a little more now. Well, in 2010, the USDA revealed that approximately 1,000 calories out of the standard 2,700 calorie mm -hmm. diet were accredited to added sweeteners and unhealthy fats. In contrast, dairy, fruits, and vegetables only attributed to 424 calories. That's it, huh? Yeah. So isn't that crazy? Uh, that's like... Not great. <laughs> so two and a half times the average American's diet is horrible compared to the good that they're getting. Right. That's not very good. Another 2010 mm -hmm. study conducted by the National Cancer Institute showed that three out of four Americans do not even eat one single fruit a day. Well, you should eat one single fruit a day or two maximum. Right. That's it. Nine out of ten Americans don't meet the minimum recommendations of daily intake of vegetables. So that's almost everyone not even eating vegetables it's 90%. or vegetables. Vegetables. And I bet most people that are watching now don't even know what the normal intake of vegetables are. Probably not. No, so it's it's six servings. That's the minimum serve amount. That's not how much you should have every day. Well, it, if you're not doing any, yeah. Right. But the minimum amount is six servings. And a serving of vegetables is about a cup. Right. Where a serving of fruit is about a third of a cup. Mm -hmm. Yep. So researchers ultimately mm -hmm. conclude that nearly the entire United States consumes a diet that has not on par with recommendations. Mm -hmm, not at all. So let's be real. We're not going to have a very good gut if we're not consuming anything to help with that gut. Right. And you are what you eat. Right. Right. While everyone's dietary needs are different, there mm -hmm. are general guidelines that everyone can benefit from adhering to. The ideal diet for someone looking to prevent gut imbalances, heal from gut dysfunction, and reverse gut damage includes eating whole, unprocessed foods, right? Plant-based fiber, mm -hmm. plenty of fruits and vegetables, with vegetables being three to one. So for every three servings of vegetables... One serving of fruit. Exactly. Not more than that. Right. Beans and legumes, mm -hmm. there's a ratio on that too. One serving, a cup of cooked beans or legumes for every three servings of vegetables. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Nuts, seeds, non-dairy fermented foods. Now, nuts and seeds are very good for you, very healthy. A lot of good, healthy fats in them. Uh, but be careful. A quarter cup is about 250 calories. And it's never about the calories until, dun, 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 it's about the calories. And so we've had patients that were had great diets and difficulty losing weight if they wanted to. But when we examined them, we found out that they were eating a cup, a cup and a half of nuts and seeds a day. And that equates to 1,000 to 1,500 calories, which was, then it became an issue. But when we got them back to a quarter or half a cup, then their bodies balanced out better. So to determine your specific dietary needs, it's really recommended to follow through with an elimination diet. Elimination diets are incredibly diagnostic tools to determine food sensitivities, irritants, mm -hmm. allergies that are contributing to a compromised gut. So we're going to discuss a little bit more about elimination diets and how you can try them out. I'm betting with an elimination diet, you're pretty much eliminating everything. Right. Huh. An elimination diet is administered in a way that removes common food irritants that could be sabotaging your health. You know, the foods to eliminate mostly in your diet would be dairy, 
gluten, soy, corn, eggs, particularly conventional eggs, refined sugar, but I'd say all sugar, get rid of it all. Yeah. Uh, peanuts, red meat, alcohol, mm. no, just kidding, caffeine, hydrogenated oils, and packaged or processed foods. Can I talk a second about gluten? Yeah. So if we go back to about 1900, the wheat that we grew in this country, there was about 48 different uh, types of gluten in the wheat. But through crossbreeding and everything, we're down to about six types of gluten. And so the gluten has become so much stronger and so much more uh, prevalent in the wheat than it was 100 plus years ago. That's why people are having problems with the gluten. And we'll get into that a little more later. Well, by doing an elimination diet, usually you want at least 21 days to allow time for the negative foods related to the immune reactions to disappear. Once you've waited the proper amount of time, then you'll start beginning to reintroduce each food group individually mm -hmm. and just pay attention to see how each food makes you feel. If it begins to bother you, remove it and then start again. Continue reintroducing the different food groups to see what's causing the biggest upset to mm -hmm. your to your diet and to your gut. You know, one of the things with 21 days, you said, because three weeks is a great time to eliminate things. It gets antigens mm -hmm. down. That is the things that are causing the inflammation. Um, but SP Complete, what you did with your, your shake challenge all week, last right. week, is a great product to use for 21 days to help calm the inflammation and change over the gut microbiome uh, while you're doing that elimination diet. It gives yeah. you plenty of protein, lots of vegetables, and I'm stuck. Uh-oh. There we go. <laughs> So you're probably all thinking, oh my gosh, I'm listening to what you're telling me for an elimination diet. There's mm -hmm. nothing to eat. I'm going to be so hungry. What am I going to eat if I eliminate all these things? Food. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so unless you're aware of any specific dietary needs that your doctor has advised to do otherwise, foods that are diet friendly during the elimination phase include things such as vegetables except for corn, except corn. Mm -hmm. right no corn on an right. elimination diet whole fruits you want to make sure that you're limiting your fruit intake mm -hmm. though especially if you're worried about high cholesterol eating a lot of fruit can help raise your cholesterol which we don't want no, triglyceride levels mm -hmm. specifically with the triglycerides um with the cholesterol yeah i'll get to worry about that. <laughs> that's uh, all right that's all right yeah. So we had a patient a couple summers ago whose triglycerides were just over 600. Now normal is below 150. And I called him out, I said, you know, you're eating too much fruit. And he's sitting there going, oh, I'm not eating any fruit. And his wife's behind him going. And so anyway, he was eating about 11 pieces of fruit a day. Ooh. And we took him off the fruit and in about a month and a half, his triglyceride levels were below 300. Wow. You know? All right. Well, you can also use some dairy substitutes mm -hmm. like almond milk, coconut milk, mm -hmm. cashew milk, lean and clean animal proteins, okay. wild game. Dairy lamb. substitutes for a second. Sure. You know, the almond milk, coconut milk, hemp milk, cashew milk. Great choices. I caution you to read the labels, though. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of them are um, like oat milk has canola oil in it. Oh. Right. Exactly. And so read the labels and see what the ingredients are. Right. Yeah. Always make sure that you're reading to mm -hmm. make sure that it just has pure ingredients in it. Um, but anyway, we want to use, stick with some lean and clean animal proteins mm -hmm. such as wild game, lamb, organic chicken, fresh fish, nuts, seeds, beans, mm -hmm. most legumes. You don't want soybeans or mm -hmm. peanuts. Mm -hmm. So those are not good for you. Gluten-free grains and moderation. Quinoa is a good choice. Amaranth. Mm -hmm. um, a few things like that. High quality oils like coconut, avocado, or cold pressed olive oils. Very good. Herbal mm -hmm. teas you can have. Um, you can have some sweetener alternatives in moderation. Not the best recommendation, but mm. some honey is okay sometimes. Um, Blackstrap molasses. Yeah. Good. But <laughs> add lots of spices in. Use the yeah. olive oils, use the coconut oil, um, those kinds of things. And add a lot of spices and herbs to mm -hmm. flavor and to really enhance your diet. Yeah, be careful of the sweeteners because yeah. that'll, that can throw you off track and, and prevent the microbiome from healing. Right, well according to the United States Department of Agriculture, the average American consumes over 150 pounds of refined sugar per year. Sugar is hiding in almost all of our food supply right now, which is really hard to avoid unless you're paying attention to that. So added sugars come in many forms. So look on mm -hmm. your labels, and if you see anything that says high fructose corn syrup, 
corn syrup, corn sweetener, cane juice, dextrose, fructose, glucose, or, or maltose, dehydrated cane juice. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Malt syrup. There's all kinds of labels mm -hmm. um, and names for sugar. And right. we don't if we don't know that, we can't do anything to change that. So it's really important to pay attention to the mm -hmm. labels. Unfortunately, sugar is one of the most detrimental anti-nutrients for the health of your gut. It is. Yeah. So when we have sugar, it totally weakens the gut. When we do heart sound recorders, we've shown in live workshops, not video record, not recorded on or live on Facebook, but in you know person lives, mm -hmm. when we used to be able to do that. Right. Um, but we show when someone gets just a half teaspoon of sugar, how it just throws off cardiac function, heart function, like instantly within moments. Yeah, and, and so, it does. Yeah, it does that with your gut mm -hmm. as well. Right. It helps. Yeah. It promotes by eating sugar. It'll mm -hmm. promote the growth of bad bacteria. It hinders the growth of beneficial bacteria, mm -hmm. which we need to process our food. And it'll promote parasites, mm -hmm. fungus like candida. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, and it also can um, contribute to leaky gut as well. Very much so. So the prevalence of gluten allergies and sensitivities have been on a steady and steep rise. It goes back to how we're making wheat. Okay. And however, research has suggested that even those without diagnosed intolerances may still be experiencing digestive distress from the consumption of gluten. So true. Gluten directly affects the integrity of the intestinal lining, opening up the spaces. So if the cells are supposed to be, you know, close knit together, and they are in the intestinal lining, when we have gluten, it causes irritation, what causes separation, and now undigested food can leak into the lining of the gut and getting into the lymphatic and bloodstream. And so as that happens, the intestines become more permeable, but for things that shouldn't be getting in there, things that are undigested. And then that's gonna to lead to leaky gut, the ability for toxins, microbes, for uh, antibodies, undigested food particles, and all that to be released from the intestines into the bloodstream. And it'll contribute to uh, secretion of inflammatory chemicals, which then lead to damage of otherwise healthy tissue. And not just in the intestines, but the rest of the body as well. So while gluten is found in the majority of grains, mm -hmm. such as wheat, mm -hmm. barley, spelt, and rye, not all grains contain gluten. Many mm -hmm. gluten-free free grains should be avoided while working to heal your gut. So you want to make sure brown rice, for example, contains phytic, mm -hmm. phytic acid. Phytic acid. Am I saying that right? Yeah, sure. Great job. <laughs> Look at that. Phytic acid is difficult for your body to That's break awesome. down and digest, which leads to inflammation within the digestive tract. Phytic acid also affects the absorption of key minerals, including magnesium, calcium, mm -hmm. and zinc, and makes digestive enzymes less efficient and causes overall digestive distress. Mm -hmm. Soaking in sprouting grains can help remove the phytic acid productive covering, making them more digestible and easy um, for you to moderate. And that's where, when you buy Ezekiel bread, that's a sprouted grain where the grains have been soaked to get rid of the phytic acid and to start the sprouting of it, which changes the properties so it's less grain-like, more plant-like when they grind it up to uh, make a flour. Not that we're promoting that, but it's a better option. Would be a better option. Mm -hmm. If you're doing an elimination diet, though, you really want to stick to um, more whole foods. Listen, you that. just spent eight weeks in your home. You can do an elimination diet for three weeks. Right. That's nothing. <laughs> According to the Centers for Disease Control, or better known as the CDC, mm -hmm. in the last 30 days, 48.5% of Americans have taken at least one prescription drug. 21.7% of Americans have been taking, have taken three or more prescription drugs. These are new prescriptions. Yes, new. In the last 30 days, exactly. right? Exactly. Some of the many medications that have been proven to disrupt the uh, bacterial balance in the gut and the digestive function are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, mm -hmm. NSAIDs. Um, synthetic steroids mm -hmm. such as prednisone, mm -hmm. um, broad-spectrum antibiotics, oh, yeah. birth control pills, antidepressants. Now, a little disclaimer. We're not mm -hmm. here telling you, don't take those. Right. Don't take them. Okay? There are times when it's necessary. But if you are on medications, you know, Call your holistic healthcare provider and say, hey, listen, this is what I'm taking because all medications make the body deficient in certain nutrients, mm -hmm. minerals, enzymes, vitamin complexes, fats and proteins. All medications do that. There's not one that doesn't. 
So work with your holistic healthcare provider, like us, mm -hmm. to determine, well, what do you need to substitute to replenish and rebuild what's being done? Yeah, in most cases, lifestyle changes can replace all of these medications. Mm -hmm. However, the overuse of these anti-inflammatory products that most people are using on a daily basis, um, they've become the norm and they cause unnecessary stress on the digestive and the immune system. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for an alternative, obviously we can help you with that and we'd be happy to talk with you and see how we can help you um, relieve some of the symptoms that you're experiencing or if you're looking to get off some of those medications. Right. So your body needs sufficient amount of digestive enzymes. Have we said that enough? I think so. I think so. Maybe not. Well, in order to break down the food particles efficiently. Without them, the food you eat would not be broken down and turned into the form that your body can actually absorb. So if you think about this, I'm going to go back to the, the movie, um, uh, not Michael, um, The Phenomenon with John Travolta. If you don't remember that. So in the movie, his character is dying. And he befriends these two little kids, his girlfriend's kids. And so, anyway, they're a little upset. And he and the two kids are out talking in the, in the field because they live on a farm. And, he's, you know, the boy's a little bit about, you know, upset. And so John Travolta takes a bite of the apple and starts chewing and says, you know, this apple now is becoming a part of me. And if you took a bite, it'd become a part of you. Just as we knew each other, we're a part of each other now. And how it gets into your cells. And so that's why it's so important to make sure we're chewing appropriately and acid washing appropriately and digesting appropriately so these foods that we eat can get into and absorb into our bodies. Kind of like the apple in the movie, the, the phenomenon. I don't think I've ever seen that. Oh, my. Well, <laughs> movie night. So your body produces digestive enzymes mm -hmm. from the pancreas, stomach, salivary mm -hmm. glands, and the small intestine. Decreased production of these digestive enzymes can cause many different things like acid blocking medications, zinc deficiency, mm -hmm. pesticides and chemicals and foods, excessive intake of polyunsaturated fats, like in deep fried foods, mm -hmm. heavy metal consumption, and many more. Go. Thanks. Oh, I so, so many times we'll see patients that come in and they start to have bowel dysfunction. And so what's going on? Either, you know, IBS where they have bouts of constipation, diarrhea, maybe it's constipation, maybe diarrhea. But when we start to see stagnation in the bowel, when we start to see changes in the bowel, we know that the endocrine system's involved and they're getting lower thyroid function. And we know then that they're also going to be getting poor zinc absorption. And that's really important, particularly uh, with the immune system. It's very important to make sure we have enough zinc to mm -hmm. keep the immune system strong. Well, above all of everything else, usually the lack of these enzymes is due to a poor diet. Mm -hmm. So additionally, as we age, we begin to naturally produce less and less digestive enzymes and digestion becomes more difficult and less efficient. By the age of 45, 55 year old, enzymatic production rate decreases by approximately 50%. That's right. So, mm -hmm. you know, some of it, you know, is just going to happen because... As we age. Well, long story short, that. it's important to stabilize your digestion, mm -hmm. you know, which slows down the aging process, of course, and helps with digestive enzymes, absorbing nutrients efficiently and effectively. And that can be done by something real simple, right. and that is adding more raw food into your diet. Right. So probiotics, what's that? That's a that's a big play in gut health. Mm -hmm. Probiotics are live bacteria which live mostly in the lower portion of your GI tract. Right. They produce substances that help to balance your gut's microbiome by, prom by promoting healthy bacteria and hindering harmful bacteria growth. So, can I talk a minute about probiotics? Because I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> so, probiotics are very misunderstood. People think, doctors think, where do medical doctors get their nutrition information from? Most of them don't even get nutrition in school. And it really irks me that they make nutritional suggestions. Anyway, that's a side okay, note. Right. Back to probiotics. So when you take a probiotic, a probiotic needs to be fed appropriately in your body or it's just going to die. You know, whether it's the stomach acid, whether it's the, the pathogens in there that are going to destroy them. So they have to be fed appropriately. Some of them, the acidophilus groupings, need dairy, the dairy sugars, the lactose, in order to survive and thrive. Some need a little bit of sucrose, some need a little bit of maltodextrose, 
not a ton. It's not like, you know, oh, let me eat a cupcake because I'm taking a probiotic. It's, yeah. you know, it's just such a trace amount, but enough for them to give them food so that they can survive in the, in the digestive tract. A probiotic does not replenish your digestive tract with organisms. What a probiotic does is it helps to wipe out the pathogens so that the good gut flora has a chance to flourish and strengthen. That's how it works. Well, probiotics can be found in a wide variety of foods, including mm -hmm. yogurt, kefir, mm -hmm. sauerkraut, um, miso, um, kombucha. Has, any, has anyone ever made that? I kombucha, know. Yep, tea, sure. Yeah. That's always good. I like that. Kimchi. Yep. Mm -hmm. You may also want to explore further supplementation by taking a probiotic supplement. Some of our favorites, one of our favorites, we have um, Prosymbiotic. Prosymbiotic. Yeah. Wonderful one. It's really nice sometimes to really supplement with that because you, it's good to have that healthy. Mm -hmm. um, little, little plug for standard process. They have four probiotics. Mm -hmm. Prosymbiotic, um, lactic acid yeast. Uh, Zymex, Zymex 2, they're all for different things, but they are antibiotic resistant. Look at that. And they're not GMO products, they're all natural. All right, so depending on what you have going on, we'll determine which product is best for you, but there's no reason to suffer. We can always check mm -hmm. you and we can see mm -hmm. which probiotic would be best for mm -hmm. you and whatever condition you have going on. We'd be happy to do that, so make sure you let us know if you need help with that. Okay, I need a little help. All right, I'll help you. Nice. All right. Um, exposed to toxin. <laughs> exposed. Exposed to toxins. We'll try it again. Exposure <laughs> to toxins is unavoidable. Uh, <laughs> we are exposed to them on a daily basis. We estimate that we are exposed to about eighty thousand different chemicals on a weekly basis, just by being alive. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, you get the pesticides in your foods, the contamination of the water, the pollutants in the air, the chemicals um, that are in household products. That's why we use more natural products. Right. You know, you look at bananas, right? I love bananas. I do. You do? I do, but I don't eat them a lot because they're full of sugar. Okay. So anyway, but I only eat organic bananas. And the reason for that is the conventional ones are what we call blue bagged. And what happens on the plantations is they put a blue bag around the, um, the growing bunch that's filled with pesticides. And I've been down in the Caribbean and I've witnessed this on tours and stuff. And so, yeah, and so what happens is those bananas absorb the pesticides, and that's why I only eat the organic ones. But to reduce, the, um, to reduce and prevent toxins and the overload, there are ways to minimize exposure, such as, what can we do? Um, organic, non-GMO yeah. foods, mm -hmm. um, air purification system, right. water filters. Now it's springtime. Toxic-free household cleaners. Oh, yes. Um, get all those toxins out mm -hmm. of your home as much as possible, especially since we are sitting in a home um, 24 hours a day now. And here in Michigan, the windows and doors are all locked up again because it's like freezing and 35 snowing. degrees and snowing. We want to make sure you're not breathing in right. all those toxins, which is going to also disrupt your gut. So mm -hmm. um, some of the other things you can do is have proper nutrition, mm -hmm. ample hydration, drink plenty of water. Fasting, sweating, exercise. Move your body ah, every day. Yes. There are also some whole food supplements that we help to get rid of the extra toxins as well. Um, a couple of our favorites, Antronex. Love Antronex. Yeah, that's yeah. great. It really um, pulls toxins right out of the liver. And it doesn't just dislocate, dislodge the toxins so then go downstream and bind somewhere else. It actually binds with them and helps get rid of that. Right. It has some anti-stiffness. Um, factor in there and really helps to loosen up the body from toxins and make you feel better. Yeah, so I don't think that just because of all these things mm -hmm. we're going to be exposed to a lot of toxins, mm -hmm. but there are ways to eliminate mm -hmm. it. And like I said, that's one. Kilico is another one. Kilico. Um, Heavy metals and um, chemicals, that one's really great for. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. going to help pull those toxins um, out of your body. Infections are also caused mm -hmm. by foreign invaders known as pathogens. Pathogens can be bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Acute infections are mm -hmm. usually mm -hmm. fought off by the immune system. However, chronic... I like to call it the immune alliance. Dun, dun, dun. Well, like an immune system, you would think like a system in the body. But the immune system in the body is really not a system. It's an alliance. It includes all the systems, organs from different systems. So I like to call it the immune alliance. 
Right. Well, instead of your immune system or alliance, there you go. Um, it provides continued effort to fight the chronic infection without mm -hmm. removing the pathogens. This leads to health problems indefinitely and a severe hindrance of the healthy gut microbiome. Unfortunately, many of the conventional methods of handling infections also compromise gut health. It's best to work to understand any infections within your body, treat them appropriately, and work with a professional to gain your health back. Mm -hmm. Here in our office, that's exactly what we do. We find the underlying cause of your issue, then feed the body the correct nutrition or the product to help eliminate those toxins so you can function properly mm -hmm. and regain your health. And that's important because, you know, if you just take something that covers up your symptoms and the underlying issue is still there, the body can de be decaying even more and getting into a more serious condition. Whereas if you uncover the underlying condition and support function of the body to eliminate that issue, now you get a body that's stronger and healthier and able to face anything. Right. Well, stress also can mm. be a number one source of some gut issues. I love talking um, about stress. Yeah. Mm. Poor diet, mm -hmm. lack like of I'm sleep, sleep. overtraining. Overtraining is huge. Overthinking things. What? I don't know anyone who mm. does that, right? Right. <laughs> Feeling unfulfilled, major life changes. I'm sure all of us are struggling a little bit with the added stress because we had major life our life last two months. Yeah, it? have been very mm -hmm. significant. Um, all of our system and our schedules different mm -hmm. right now. So trying to work through that and maneuver that so pretty much anything that puts a high demand on your body mind and spirit yep the gut specifically is vulnerable to stress stress induces changes in the gut's permeability barrier accuracy sensitivity blood flow secretions everything is um, directly related to stress in your gut mm -hmm. if the gut's not functioning properly the rest of us really isn't functioning that properly goes back to you are what you eat if you can't mm -hmm. And actually, to be more specific, you are what you can digest, mm -hmm. assimilate, or absorb, and eliminate, right. or not eliminate. So it's really important, and I know we've said this before, it's really important to eat an antioxidant-rich diet, mm -hmm. taking whole food supplements mm -hmm. specific to what your body needs, um, taking deep <sighs> breath exercises, Regular exercise, moving your body, mm -hmm. participating in social activities. Social activities. So don't be afraid to get out under your own accord with what you're comfortable with. Yes. And right now that's a little limited, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you can't get out with your own family that mm -hmm. you're living under the same household with. Throw that ball around. Just do something together as a family because it's going to really help yes. with gut and relieving some of the stress that we're having. And if you're up to it, I do recommend... Calling friends and seeing if you can get together with them. Not in close quarters, but maybe, you know, a few feet apart out in the front yard or whatever. If you're comfortable with a mask or not. Whatever you're comfortable with. That's important. But we do need to get out and be social because that's very healthy for us. And I know a lot of people have been doing social. Mm -hmm. We just did this last night with family. You can get mm -hmm. on Zoom calls right. and have those conversations. The more people you have, the harder it is to understand everyone. But it is nice to be able to see those people. We have and we really people on that Zoom call. We, we really need to make sure that we're taking time to find a hobby that mm -hmm. that we like so we can keep our mind stress free as much as possible. Getting outside, there's lots of ways that you can manage your stress. Mm -hmm. So good for you and all of us. Good for us. Yeah, we can um, actually help reverse mm -hmm. intestinal damage, heal from digestive distress, rebalance your microbiome, mm -hmm. and repair your overall gut health. Ooh. What? I have an interjection. Of course. Yes. You do. So when we're talking about gut balance, right, and digestion. I was going to talk about the four R's. You can do the four R's? All right, I'll, I'll do it. You can, you, before or after? can you add that? I can do that. Yep. All right. Go ahead. Four R's. <laughs> So, I if you're following are. functional wellness, yep. if you can go and follow the four all R's, not R's, R's or if you're a pirate, you can do that as well. Go. It's going to help to uncover your health issues, nutritional needs, mm -hmm. digestive dysfunctions, and bacterial, bacterial imbalances, yep. is what I'm trying to get out. So, want to remove 
Get rid of it's it. the first one. First R, remove. Eliminate problem foods, toxins, low-grade infections, and oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. You want to repair. Begin reintroducing a clean diet with essential nutrients and whole food supplements your body needs to help repair it. Mm -hmm. You want to restore, restore, repopulate the gut with healthy bacteria, which we talked about before, gut flora, and using a probiotic. Mm -hmm. And you want to replace the right. stomach acid. See, I told you I was leading you. Um, to digestive enzymes that can be lacking in your gut. And we have a few products that we like to use. And we know, to help as we replace. mentioned before, if you're over 45, you're probably about 50% of your digestive mm -hmm. enzymes. So most everyone needs something to mm -hmm. help the stomach break down their food. Right, so my favorite is Zypan, which increases my stomach acid mm -hmm. and has the, the digestive enzymes from the pancreas, so gives the pancreas a break. And if we look at the average American diet that's heavily carb and sugar laden, the pancreas is overworked, it's gassed. And so it's so important to make sure that you, you have something like this. Or with you, because we just tested you yesterday, <laughs> you don't want the acid, no. you want the multizyme, which is similar to Zypan, but without the extra acid in it. Right. And so that has the three enzymes to digest your fats, proteins, and your carbs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you're not sure what to use, again, come on in, give us a call. Mm -hmm. We'd be happy to help you. We're doing a lot of things online right now. We are open, just so you know, so you are welcome to come in. We are um, open. We're just very limited and how we're making sure everyone's spaced out so mm -hmm. there's not a lot of people in the office at one time. Right. And we're making mm -hmm. sure to use lots of precautions to make sure everything is clean and... Well, we want um, everyone to feel safe and comfortable while Exactly. Mm -hmm. But we also offer online as well. So if That's you right. want to just give us a call, we'd be happy to go over it with you to make sure we're getting you on the right protocol mm -hmm. to help repair your gut and get you on the right track. Well, we've developed an amazing I think an amazing online consultation uh, for patients who don't want to venture out yet. Yep. We've been working with that the last six weeks. Well, gut health is truly the pathway to optimize your overall mm -hmm. health. So let's summarize for just a moment as we're wrapping it up today. Okay. The best way to overcome and improve gut health includes um, additional supplementation, making mm -hmm. sure you're feeding the body what it needs so that it can properly digest. Yeah. Because the root to all disease starts with digestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so getting the right probiotic mm -hmm. in your system, getting all the toxins out of your system and eliminating that, mm -hmm. using mind-body practices, staying hydrated. And, you know, hydration is really important. A lot of times people will say to us, oh my gosh, I've been drinking so, so much, much water. water. How much water are you drinking? Oh, two glasses a day. Yeah, that's that's not so much water. You Take your really body need... weight, divide it by two. That's how many ounces of water you should drink a day. Right. Water. Just water. Mm. And if you're drinking coffee and teas and things like that, you're going to have to mm. increase your water intake right. as well. But that you want to get things moving and flush things out. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to stay hydrated. You want to limit your caffeine and alcohol. They, in... they dehydrate. Yep. Mm -hmm. Increase your fiber intake. And most importantly, your fiber. <laughs> you Look just have a lot to talk about today. Today. Oh my goodness. So fiber. You want the natural fiber that's in your vegetables mm -hmm. and the fruit. You don't want to be taking the fake fibers that are produced in, you know, in a mill or a lab. You want the real stuff. Right. Go ahead. Most and importantly. Yeah. It's really important to get checked so you know what's going on with your gut mm -hmm. and you get to the root cause of what's happening and so you can correct it and have a program that's tailored specifically for you. Correct. Well, I think that's about it today. I think we're going to wrap it up. I think we've probably shared a lot of information to everyone. You um, me I can't talk anymore. <laughs> I'm saying it's time to wrap it up. So right. we just really want to thank you for your time today. I'm glad um, that you all joined us, and I'm hoping that you know, you learned a little bit more about the importance of a healthy gut because it affects everything, mm -hmm. not just having, oh, my stomach hurts or I'm not feeling great that way, but it can affect the entire body. So we want to really let you know that um, we're really passionate about sharing this topic with people and anyone who wants to transform their lives and achieve optimal health. So please make sure that you're sharing this video with your friends and mm -hmm. family so that they can learn how to Because you'd be surprised who really would benefit from watching this. You know, sometimes people go around and never talk about their ailments and stuff. And it, it's just amazing when you share a simple video like this, 
how much you might really change somebody's life. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, if you need help on this journey at all, or if you have any questions about anything that we talked about today, please, please, please reach out to us. Um, you can always um, give us a call at 586-445-8032, mm -hmm. or you can go to our website as well, shoreswellnesssolutions.com. We also have a spot there. You can schedule an appointment, or if you just want to ask a question and you don't feel comfortable asking it here, um, feel free to post any questions that you have in the comments. But sure it's an email. Yep. Mm -hmm. But like I said, if you're not comfortable with that and you want to talk to us privately, that's fine too. Just um, reach out to us, let us know how we can help you, and we'll be happy to get you on the right track to a good, healthy gut. That's right. All right. Well, I think that's all for today. That's it. Yep. I'm We're going to sign Dave. off. And I'm Amy. And we want to be your inspiration for healthy living. Have a great day. Bye, guys.